Big shit, huh. it's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing Miss Jamaica. Walk on. Hey, what's going on this morning? Not nothing, blessed. Blessed to be here to see another day, man. It's good to uh, be able to wake up on this side. Check it, man. Hey, man, we got a special guest today. He really don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here is a a guy who knows his knows everything about it coming out of poverty, being a guy that knows uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Is it Jamilson? Jamilson. Jamilson Pierre. Uh, yeah, Jamil. Lewis. Yeah, Lewis. Yeah, Lewis. Yeah. Jamilson Pierre Lewis. Lewis. Senior. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta yeah. speak into the mic. Yeah, yeah. Let's get yeah. it going. Yeah, this is Jamilson Pierre Lewis. They call me Doctor Pierre. Doctor Pierre. Yes. Wow. Um, so man, how did you, how, how, just, let's going back a little bit. We always go back. Uh, just give us a little background of who you are, where you from. I mean, what brought you, uh, into the limelight? Oh, well, thank you. E. Well, uh, originally I'm from Haiti. I came to Miami when I was 11 years old and I graduated Miami Carroll city high school where mm -hmm. I grew up. Um, everything that you would hear Rick Ross talk about and, uh, also, uh, trick daddy as well. Okay, trick that as well. Yes. So when you say you saying this, this high school is is pretty uh, popular. Right in the Miami area, it's uh, all of those guys uh, that were there when I was growing up. Yeah, yeah. So that high school is one of the one of the, the, the and this is in in, in Miami. Miami Carroll City. So you went to school with these guys, or they just no, talk about actually, the high school? Uh, I went to school to Miami Carroll City. They grew up in Miami as well. Okay. So have you ever met those guys? Ever ran into them? Well, in 183rd Street, the famous Miami Garden, I met all of those guys. Whoa, that's dope, man. That's a good thing that to, to be then, uh, connected with the uh, with, with with people of that stature because of the uh, monetarily gain and just being able to speak that language. A lot of times, people don't look at that, but the whole hip hop industry is about uh, it's more about just um, entrepreneurship. If you really look at it, we put a little other stuff in it, but it's definitely entrepreneurship. That is absolutely correct. Yeah. So I want to just, uh, but, but growing up, I mean, what type of uh, um, upbringing did you have being that you came, you, you came from another country? Yes. Well, imagine uh, raising in the worst ghetto there is, where you did not even know that you were in the ghetto. As a matter of fact, part of it that you were, you were thinking that you, uh, you were affluent. Now imagine growing up in Miami, Carroll City, Liberty City ghetto. Now, to most people in the suburban, that is ghetto. But coming here in America, that was actually luxury where, based on from where I was coming from. So we're growing up in, in, in the ghetto. There's a lot of things that you actually learn that prepare you for the business world. What's the name of the um, area in Haiti that you grew up in? I grew up in uh, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, uh, mm. Kofu. And right now it's... It's one of those places that you can't even uh, walk uh, because of the kidnapping and uh, the killing that's going on over there. How far but, is that from the tourist areas? Actually, it's in the heart of the tourist areas in the capital. Really? Yes. Okay, because I know people still traveling to Haiti for tourism, right? Not right now. Most people are going there to see family members, but right now it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Pretty okay. bad. Wow. I mean, uh, how does that mentally it has to be draining to see a place that you grew up in um, go through so much? You know what I mean? Well, psychologically, it's, it's really tough, but at the same time, it's a benefit. The, the thing is, when you grow up in poverty and uh, you are hungry for success, you're becoming more hungry than most people because you don't have anything. You have nowhere but to go up. Now, when you have any little opportunity that's given to you, you actually take it and you take every single second of that opportunity to drive yourself out of it. Mm. Were you raised um, a single child or you have brothers and sisters? I have uh, brothers and sisters. My mother died when I was one years old, uh, giving birth to a younger brother. Imagine my father left four children when I was two years old in Haiti. And came to America and um, 
decided to bring my stepmom, who which was with us, and left us with family members. Imagine your father working almost 18 hours a day, sending money to take care of you, but all the other family members take that money where you experience poverty, where you shouldn't even have to. So they take that money to buy land and do some other stuff where you really goes to days where you don't eat for two, three days. Wow. And so you were the second to last child. I'm the third child. Right, my, the second to last. Father, yes. And um, so for your father, so your mom had other children before she passed away? My father uh, had seven. Oh, my mom seven. had one older brother uh, b- before she passed away. Okay, so you have a huge family. Yes, uh, he has eight, but one passed, which is the child that right my, that, that passed mom. with my mom. Yeah. Okay, okay, sorry. Wow, that's that, that, that's something, man. Imagine how long did you have to go through that before you was able to try to fend for yourself? Well, I had to go through that till I was about eleven years old, and when I came to America back in uh, nineteen eighty-eight, it uh, it was like a relief to to be able to feel deliverance. And when you came, did your father file for all of the kids and all of you came or just you? Yes, all four of us all came four. at the same time, yes. Okay. And how was it um, when you first arrived? What's the difference? How did you feel? How how well did you fit in? Well, they, they, they arrived. What's the difference? How did you feel? How how well did you fit in? Well, the, the, the interesting thing is imagine drinking... Uh, water that you thought that was clean and which you call it dirty water. But here, the, one of the first experiences when we drank the clean water here, we really got sick mm-hmm. because our system- Cause Not used to it. Not used to it. And uh, coming here, uh, we, we, f- we flew with an American airline and we, we really thought that every fantasy thing that you were watching in television from people having access to the refrigerator to most people that grow up here with that, but that was a luxury because in Haiti for you to actually uh, have cold water if you didn't have refrigerator in your house you would literally have to put it outside and that would be how you get your cold water and that's the reason why a lot of people cook fresh food every day because you don't have a refrigerator to preserve the food mm, man I I tell you man like I said I, I can only imagine because of uh, what you guys uh, um, how you guys came up uh, in a situation like that. I'm being a country boy, I can relate somewhat though. So I get it, you know. Um, but I think that what don't kill you make you stronger. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, everything that God has for you is coming to you. You know, it's one of the foundation of my success, driven to overcome poverty. It's it's one of those success story that you did not have anything. The only thing that you really have is God. Mm -hmm. And having God in you and a belief in yourself, what you can accomplish, it's it's something that only God can install that in you. Man, I can so much relate. You know, like a lot of times people look at you and and they and they judge you from your past. And when you when you've experienced life and God is uh, let you see some things in life when you're not just in Haiti or if you're not just in the country and then you end up going different places and then, you know, your eyes are open to where to God. When you first when I first found out who God was, um, I, I read a scripture that said, if any man be in Christ, he a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So I felt like with that passage, I could be somebody new. I didn't have to be who I used to be. And I think a lot of times uh, those are the things that I hold on to when I see myself drifting and falling back into situations where one may, you know, judge me or one may or I may be misjudging myself is that because of who I believe in, I'm able to latch into starting all over again. Right. Most people can't understand that level. See, this is this is what you say is, is so powerful. Most people do not realize that you have eighty six thousand four hundred seconds in a day. If you utilize every one of those seconds, I guarantee you, in forty eight months, you will be a multimillionaire, wow. provided that you invest in the right things. A lot of time, you will see people spending time. They don't understand time is like an investment. 
So if you invest three hours in studying, following people who are actually doing things to bring it to the forefront, you actually learn something that it took somebody 20 years to go over. Majority of our media are brainwashing our people because by them consuming information, they don't have a way of making other decision. They're not realizing from a computer science perspective, I have a PhD in information technology and business administration. Your mind is like a database. When you have to make decision, it's the input that you take in that you're going to have to use to analyze it depending on the situation that you are in. Majority of our people in what we call the ghetto, they have more capability to become more successful than someone that was born with success in their life. Especially if they didn't have to work for it, they don't have the same drive within them to accomplish those things. So when you are hungry for success, I, I, I always tell everybody, imagine close your nose and your mouth. Imagine that you want to breathe. breathe. And a lot of people, I'm looking at it even for my, for my children. I have uh, four children, a twins, two beautiful girls that's 24, going to be 25 years old. I'm looking at the struggle that I went through, how some of them are so appreciative of what their father went through. Most kids, sometimes, they do not take the path where if you work hard for them, they do not take the path where to say, look, I want to do something different. The truth is, you're supposed to be a thousand times better than your father or your mother. Sometimes it doesn't always end up that way. But success is something that you have to work at it every single day. It becomes a habit. I'm 44 years old. And I could tell you, if you put me in any country with the practice and the principle that I have on my book, I will become successful again. If you take everything away from me, the only thing you should not make a mistake is giving me an opportunity to start over because I will do it a thousand times better because it's the drive, the God in you. Most people are not able to tap in the power of God that's in them. That's the reason why in this book where I am, when I'm talking about God, when you come in from Haiti, you have all this, what they call familiar spirit that's affecting you. My first children, their mom is Jamaican and uh, she from Kingston, Jamaican. She was abandoned by her father. So that's mean that you have this abandoned spirit that's working from her side, plus you have this abandoned spirit that's working from my side because my mom died when I was two years old. That's correct. So when you take those two folks coming in together, you have shyness. You have all the things that, that the kids end up inherit. Now it's going to be up to you as a parent if you acknowledge that for you to empower them to tap into themselves every single day in order for them not to face setback. I, I agree with you 100%. Um, I, I, and I look at it again. I go back to that same scripture. Um, teaching my children and, and, and showing them different things in the word of God, trying to get them to understand, you know, uh, who God is. That's the most essential thing. Because if you can teach them this, then they understand the blueprint of life. And what the word of God does is it, trickulates through all the different people's life, whether it was Joseph, whether it was John, whether it was Moses, whether it was Joshua, no matter who it was, it gives you an opportunity to look at other people's life, some of their successes, some of their failures, and then you're able to tap into that. And then it, it exercises the strengthening in you. Yes. And that's the whole game of why people read and why people try to educate themselves, but also have a spiritual connection to God. And I think that's very important. Having a spiritual connection to God is extremely important. And I think that is one of my key foundation. In uh, 2018, my Range Rover was in an accident. It was almost uh, and it. It an explosion, this guy that fell asleep. I was out of conscience for about 45 seconds, and I heard something in me. It said, what would you do with your second chance? I say, I want to help a thousand people to a million people become financially successful. I said, then God, you could take me. 
And then suddenly I wake up. I got out of the, the Range Rover, pull my wife out, and then by the time we pull back, it explodes. I have everything in camera, the fire department right there in Mesquite because I had a, a wrench in, in Kaufman. What that was doing is that when we went to the hospital in Kaufman, my temperature was like uh, what they call it uh, stroke level. The yeah. highest. Mm-hmm. But I was talking to the doctor just like you and me right now. They brought all the doctors in to look at my reading and how I'm talking. It didn't match because the spirit of God was in me in that moment. When you have spirit of God with you, they can hate you. They can try to oppress you, mm-hmm. but they can't touch that, which is the spirit. See, right now, e, people are looking at the physical you. But they do not understand that that spirit that is in you, it's something that God doesn't give anyone permission to touch that. It belongs to him and him only. But a lot of people are mistakenly. I told everybody, 2022, women are going to become more successful in everything because that's the vibration for women. Black women, white women, women in particular, worldwide, going to have greater position they have never seen before. And seven years ago, I told every black person spiritually they were delivered. Now it just needs to manifest in the physical world. The oppression that minority people has been facing worldwide, it is over. From now to 3030, you will see a new wave of knowledge coming from minority people everywhere. And by women taking the lead, you will see major change of fairness. It doesn't matter if it's a white woman, black woman, Hispanic woman, you will see a lot of new leadership coming starting 2022. A vibration of six and onward is going to be very powerful for our environment. Man, that's dope, man. Let's get into your book. But I want to know, um, how old were you when... You started gaining this knowledge. Because I know sometimes you, we have to fall before we can come up exactly. and you have to go through things. So I want to know what happened for you to seek this knowledge and to figure this out. When I was six years old, my grandmother died. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the ambulance came and then they was bringing her out. I had came from church that day and the pastor had put his hand in people head forehead so what i did i ran after my grandmother and i did what the pastor did and she woke up and my grandmother told everyone that i woke her up for years in haiti anytime somebody's sick they will put my hand and they will heal then after a while i got disconnected one day i was reading the book by Zig Ziglar and everything he was saying it was already I was already doing when Zig Ziglar said would you allow somebody to bring garbage into your front door and if not then why would you allow them and how old were you when you read this book I was about 13 years old okay at the time okay then I start getting tapes and listening to audiobooks I would go to the library I would get book from all the different authors, Tony Robbins, all those, because I was hungry for success. I did not have a role model. I'm the only one in my family with an accent. The reason why is because I wanted to speak differently, but my parents didn't speak English like you guys do. My parents didn't have the financial mean to send me to a better school. Every single thing that I've done with almost $175,000 in student loan, it's so I can get out of poverty. Then once I acquired the knowledge, I find out I didn't even need the PhD. Because if you're hungry for success with the environment that we have now, with YouTube and the internet, you can have a 100 PhD with knowledge without paying a penny for it. But you have to want it. That's one of those things that I told my kids. If you go into a university, make sure you go into accomplish something where you can run.
because you are the CEO of your life. You must have a mission statement of everything that you're doing because you are an ink. An employer hires you because you're producing something for them. They're paying you. So technically, you are in business. But most people do not look at that. When we go to school, we go to school for us to go work for somebody. We never go to school for us to come do for ourselves. That's why when we receive the information, we don't use it the same way. Even if you're working for somebody, it should be a temporary thing while you doing your own thing in the side. Again, you have 86,400 seconds. You can invest eight hours in a company, but you must invest at least four hours in yourself or in a side hustle where your side hustle can replace your nine to five, five times before you get a chance to quit. Wow. That's good stuff, man. Jamilson, Pierre Lewis, man, PhD. Dr. Pierre. Dr. Pierre. Yes. Um, so the book, um, when did you write this book? Uh, what year was that? And how did you come up with, I gotta, I gotta write me a book? Well, this book, I, I wrote it in 2016. Okay. Uh, the, the new book, it just came out, um, Driven to Overcome. My, my daughters, they were going to uh, Texas Woman University. And she had a moment of depression. She's like, Dad, how do you do it? It's, I see you constantly going and going. And she was depressed. And I was concerned. So I told my wife, Dad, I want to write something like a, like a blueprint. If I die, the only thing that I want you to do, have my son and my daughters read it 10 times. Because I, would, I wanted to take my mind and then put it in the book and that's the reason why when i get the feedback from the first book people love the motivation and all the other stuff but the finance part they had find it a little bit out of the league but then with the next book i went in even harder taking everything that people wanted to understand but put god in the center of it because he's the foundation of everything i am wow Jamelson, man, I tell you, this here, um, man, uh, big accomplishments, man. So um, you said that a person could become a millionaire. A person can become How a long multi millionaire. How long it take multi millionaire? And 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 if you for you to say that, you got to stand on that. What type of investments do you have? Well, the thing is, I own Super Financial Trader. Okay. I am a I'm a. You see, I have nine financial licenses. I'm a chief financial operation principal. I created Hashtrade in 2001. And Hashtrade is a platform where I process over 150,000 securities in one second in order to create buy and sell signal using super technology. And the one thing that I do is that my money is, I make it trading equity, binary option, option, cryptocurrency, and currency. So this is one of the area where I am an expert at creating platform. One of the things that I want to do is being able to partner my company with some heavy hitters. Now, I love black entities. That's the reason why the lack of Kevin Hart or Will Smith or Dr. Dre or even PDD, some of the things that they are doing, I'm amazed by it. One of my heroes is Jay-Z for where he came from and the success he's been able to achieve. I have a software that had a $7.6 billion valuation. A VC firm wanna give me $260 million seed money. The reason why I don't give in is because they want 70% ownership. That automatically make it a non-black entity. And I always tell God to give me direction as to who to do business with because it's not about making money for yourself. The thing is, I want to be able to bring 100 million minority worldwide and teach them this so-called secret in this financial market. You can make a killing up. If I can do it, you can do it 100 times better. Trading is the most easiest thing if you have the right tools. The reason why people are paying the Bloomberg $2,000 a month, it's so they can have the advantage, the competitive edge. So when I had created Hedge Trade, it was supposed to take the knowledge of those big hedge funds 
and then bring it where somebody like my dad, who never finished high school in America, can trade just like a professional. And this is one of the key reasons why I stand on this platform and I ask God, I say, guide me. It's not about money because you would have already heard me as a billionaire a long time ago, but I am a spiritual driven person. So the, the thing that God has done for me, it's more than money. And that's the reason why I told God, if I cannot impact a hundred million people worldwide, because I'm one of those individuals that doesn't see color, but I stand against unfairness and oppression. And that's what God is against. Wow. Jamil, Pierre, Luis, man, good. That's good stuff, man. So um, when you think about uh, the way that uh, our uh, our people are, are, are in America, uh, people of minority, because you spoke on that earlier, um, what is the, what you say you see this thing just pretty much going away? Seven years ago, spiritually, every black oppression is done. But it needs to manifest in the physical world. And that's what you're going to see. With the leadership of women worldwide, you're gonna see a whole new paradigm shift of change. You're gonna see a lot of young people are in power. People are going to be hungry for knowledge. Things that were secretive are now coming to light. Before the end of this year, we're going to have more new information now remember, I'm on a 14 days water fast. Every year for 10 days, I fast with water to give God glory. And this is one of those things that you must have the spirit of God with you. I'm not talking about how people manipulate the Bible to gain for their own self. I'm talking about the true spirit of God that's on every one of us. And this is one of the biggest things that people are shutting away from with the shutdown of the spiritual aspect of the church and everything that we stand for. But if you get up every morning knowing that God gave you 86,400 seconds and then you say, I want to make a change in my life and I want something different, that's the reason why in this book, like I had a guy that read this book three times when it first came out on Kindle. And he wrote back and he says, every single thing that you are saying that I'm become that example to show there's nothing special about me. I grew up in the ghetto. I was born in the worst ghetto. Anything I can do, you can do it a million times better. As a super financial trader, you could be even better. The only thing that I do whenever I am given an opportunity, I don't waste the time. If you want to make a hundred million dollars, you got to start thinking like it. You have to be a millionaire mentally. Right now, I can give somebody $10 million. If he's not a millionaire mentally, I guarantee you in 10 years, he'll go broke. But if I take somebody in the, what you would call ghetto, that's already millionaire mentally and give him a hundred thousand dollars, that individual would probably make a hundred million dollars. Because success is a mindset. How you think and what you believe about yourself will make the future that you desire. Hey, that'll work, man. I tell you, man. Um, what else you got for Jamil? Nothing right now. Jamilson is a, a, a definitely a dope guy, man. So um, how can people get a, a get? Well, I know they can get your book on Amazon, and they, you got a new book coming. Yeah, over uh, um, driven to overcome. Driven to overcome. Property. And that one will be available. That's on our, uh, that's on Kindle right now. Right now, it's right. on Kindle. Okay, that's on Kindle right now. They can download it. And uh, one of the thing that I'm uh, I'm actually doing, what? every person that buy this book, I'm creating a, a a session where they have the question. Where in a group of a Zoom, where I provide them free life coach. Wow. Do you, what's the difference between this book and that book? This book has a lot of finance in there. Okay. And uh, the, uh, the other book has uh, other new information that's more powerful away from the, uh, the finance. But the finance is great for somebody that's trying to establish business plan, that's trying to uh, establish a, a company, which is great. Both complement each other. But the other book is it's, it's what everybody, based on four years focus group, 
it's that book that taking somebody from poverty and you read that book 10 times it's it's the if familiar spirit cannot even hold you especially with the with the thing the way you will be communicating with god the way you will know yourself you cannot hold yourself back wow what's the um because you keep saying 10 times what is so special about 10 times why not four times why not five times it's good the reason 10 times philosophy wise when you read something the first time some people learn by association if you were to read something and watch a video of that same thing your retention goes up approximately 35 percent the third time your retention may go up maybe another 40 percent but on the 10th time you really just need to have a 65 percent to 75 percent retention whenever you read a book if you pay say ten dollars for a book if you read the book 10 times, you would you should extract over a hundred thousand dollars of ideas just from that book. Most people do not know how to read with purpose. And that's the reason why usually the uh, financial books, I usually read them 10 times. And that's the reason why you see Warren Buffett has that same concept mm -hmm. of going back to the basic. And that is what makes a huge difference. Wow. Jamil St. Pierre Louis, PhD, uh, Free Extreme Poverty to Success. Um, the book, man, this book is also available. This book, it's, uh, it's, I ran out of it, but okay. I have uh, a lot of physical copy in hand, but it's going to come back uh, You're gonna sometime bring it back? this week. This okay. week. This week is yeah. going to come back. Yeah, this week is going to come back. Yeah. As do you well. self-publish or do you have a publishing company? Now, uh, I own Hedge Consultant Publishing. Okay. And the reason why I do that, because this book, I had sold about um, 100,000 copies of it. The privi privileged publisher committed fraud. Mm. So uh, that's the reason why. But the good thing is, I, all, I own all the rights. The only thing he was supposed to do is just do the oh, graphic work. Right. So, because I see a lot, um, we've met so many people who came on our platform who who are doing self publishing nowadays. Yeah, self publishing, it's ownership is the way to go. Even if you were to give up something that you own, try to retain at least ten percent of it. Mm -hmm. Because it's there's not enough hours in a day for you to work to make money. But if you can create a product that can give you that recurring revenue, then your money can be making money. That's the reason why I, I have a majority Gran Turismo. And I told people how I would take this money and make that money buy that car without me losing that money. Mm -hmm. And they, I own a real estate company, but I flip houses in the weekend, I have people that goes there by. It's because when you trade, you have this capital gain, where you're gonna pay almost fifty percent tax. How do you take that money, take short term capital gain, and convert it to long term, where you liable for fifteen percent tax? And that's where my real estate company comes in. And plus, I am able to make sixty to seventy percent return on the right market if you know exactly what strategy to use, even in a competitive market. God gave me a gift where if I see a property, I could tell my people, send this price and that price. I got a question. So um, being driven for success, and a lot of people are driven for success, you know how sometimes when we get so one-track mind that other things fall to the wayside, how, and you're a family man, how were you able to balance success with a that's, family? That's a, that's a very good question. It's acknowledging your time. I'm going to give you an example. I have it in my book, a chapter that's very powerful because my daughters was about to be 20, they're about to be 25 in April. They asked me that same question. And this is one of those things that I'm telling. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you go to sleep, you try to sleep for six hours to seven hours. You take one hour to get ready. That's our eight hours. Then you have 16 hours left. Say you work an hour away from your house. 
you use audiobook or something that you can put into your head while you're driving. By the time you spend eight to nine hours, say you invested 10 hours, then suddenly you will have six hours left. You could take four hours to three hours if you are in college to do all your stuff, and then you have another three hours left. That three hours, if you are driven to be a multimillionaire, you might find out each hour worth $10,000. That means that if somebody comes to you and say, look, I need to go to the mall to go holler at this girl, you have to ask yourself, is this worth $10,000 right now? <laughs> because it's not where you end up making the money. It's what you do with your time right now. How do you value it? I've been with my wife for 20 years. For 20 years, Friday evening is for my wife taking her out. Movies, everything that she fell in love with me 20 years ago. When my daughters left the house, I had to take my son and my younger daughter. So instead, not being able to take them out, I took all of them out the same way. The reason why is you have to have time for investment. That's why I have a bucket to say, I'm going to spend four weeks vacation with my family. Then X amount of time to take my wife and children out. So all of that is part of the investment. I call it the bank account system. But my wife knows when I am trading, when I am creating, when I'm, that is already allocated. So she doesn't interrupt me in those four hours where if I'm doing some philanthropic work, because she already have the time that already allocate for her. So if somebody manage that time, I guarantee you, you, they can become a multimillionaire in four years, 48 months. So Y'all heard that. So the time that's that. allocated for her, you don't do any business. Because you know how sometimes when you're a businessman, your phone ringing, this, that, whatever. And Let me tell you something. I have a 100-acre ranch in Shreveport, Louisiana. I have a mansion in Sherman. When we go there, specifically, the signal, when we in the <laughs> land... It's just time for my wife and my son. So I, because see, the thing is, and you will see in my book when I was fighting for custody for my daughters, the worst thing I did is that I was focusing so much when I was building my trading software. And there was a disconnect with my daughters until I saw when my daughters was 13 years old a 60-year-old man trying to give them compliment to, to make him feel like it. And I said, you know what? There is no money in this world that will cause me to lose my daughter. So I fought for custody, end up winning custody for my daughters. And that's when I start putting my priority the way I just told you. Mm -hmm. Because I knew I can gain financially, but when I looked at my daughter, I have to look at myself. And lose it. Did mm -hmm. I give it 100%? Wow. And that's with any relationship. You right. have to give it 100%. That's right. Hey, man, thank you so much, Jamil Pierre Louise, PhD. Mm -hmm. Great book, great uh, session, man. Uh, love the interview, uh, love your energy. I, I love you, man, and I pray that God keep continuing to bless you and, and, and prosper you in everything that you are looking to accomplish in life. Thank you. You're, and the same thing, you know, I decree and declare. Boss Talk 101. 101. Our Heavenly Father is going to bless you and your wife and your son. And because I just felt his energy, you have success in your hand. Because anything that you and your wife felt like in the past 10 years that was robbed from you, wow. God is installing it in your children. Because you have success in your life, but you already know it. But there's some time where you have doubt, where sometime the obstacle come. You may argue with your wife, but you both want that success the same way. What make you guys perfect? At the end of the day, your vision is the same. And most people should be lucky to have that in their life. Hey, man, thank you so much, man. We're going to definitely work on it, right? Yes, sir. 
All right, yeah, and the thing, uh, we just appreciate your energy, man. Like I said, in the way that you put God in the midst of everything that you do, that's one thing that we're trying to uh, really influence on this platform is that God is first in all that we do, and we're always trying to find a way to try to bless others. And we brought, mm-hmm. we've, we put this show together, and th- these are the shows right here that mean the most to me is, is when we can synergize and talk about God, finances, poverty stricken places that have been healed. You are you are, hey man, I wanna I wanna ask you about that suit you got on though, man. You're looking real 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 nice. It's tailored. Yeah. Um it's, yeah, it, it fits you perfect. I just wanna understand, um, so do you have a you have a clothing line? Well, actually, uh this is a Jamilson suit where I, Oh, okay. It, it's Jamilson. I, this is one of the suits that cost seven thousand dollars, so I can't sell it. Okay. But it's just that I have so many of them that they've made for me. It's uh, it I, a lot of people want to know where to buy this suit. But if there's somehow that mm-hmm. I could have made the same suit and then make it affordable for for people, that would that would have been a good <laughs> that idea. Look good. But the material and everything else, uh, there. And uh, who made it? Well, it's it's a guy out of Italy that mm-hmm. uh, made this suit. And uh, and I, I saw it. A lot of executives have their own folks, and they invite me in this thing, and then I, I just loved it. So even the even my my shirt is a uh, Jimilson shirt. shirt. It's it's uh, it's one of those things that uh, when you are blessed, you 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 have to actually uh, treat yourself to the best. There you go, man. Uh, so. Um, this suit right here, is this the same? Yeah, that's, that's, same? A, yeah, that's a Jamilson, Jamilson suit as suit. well. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I, I've been totally blessed, man, by the things that you've said, the positive things that you've been in put into me and my wife's life in a podcast, Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk, man. You truly are a boss, man. You, you know, know what I'm I, saying? I, I, I respect that, and I appreciate that, and I'm, I'm hoping that black people, white, learn the financial market. Because with all the different shutdown, there's billions to be made trading worldwide. And this is the reason why you see the countries all over, you're going to see a lot of young people are driving to the financial market. You watch everything that I say, because God say I'm an advisor for him. Everything that I say, and I decree and declare in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, it shall pass. Hey, man. Say, man. Thank you so much, man. Jamil St. Pierre Luis, PhD, man. Thank you for coming on the show. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.